Happy midnight, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Professor Moonshine's Redstone 101. And can you guys believe it? We're already on episode 5. That's amazing! In today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the various functions of the hopper. Now, for the most part, these are pretty easy and intuitive. However, there are a lot of them, so this video may be a little bit longer, but I guess that makes sense as we're slowly increasing in the complexity of the, com the components that we're studying. Anyways, let's head on over to the lab and talk about some hoppers. So, what is a hopper? This is a hopper right here, and it's most basically understood as kind of like a pipe. It's made to transport items from one place to another. It does so by taking items from this block space right here and moving them to a container that it's facing into. For example, this chest. So you can see, if I were to throw some stone into the block space directly above it, it takes those items and gives them to the chest. Now, since hoppers can take in items from the entire block space above them, this means that any item that's within those block space bounds is going to be pulled into the hopper. So this one's pretty easy to see. The items are just going straight in and going to the chest. Now, this also works for slabs. Slabs only take up half of a block, so there's still half of the block space that items could land on and still get sucked in by the hopper. Now, some of you may or may not know that soul sand is not a full block tall. It's actually just shorter than a block. So because soul sand is shorter than a full block, this means that there's just the smallest bit of space on top of it where an item can fall and still be within this block space. So I'll show you that now. If I drop items on here, they're still getting sucked up into the hopper. This works the same with mud, the new mud blocks. Now, dirt is a full block. So if we put stuff on here, it's not going to get sucked up into the hopper. But if we till the soil, this is now shorter than a full block, and so it's able to, the hopper's able to get the items and pull them into the chest. All that to say, hoppers take from the block space directly above them, no matter where in that block space an item is, even if it's at just the very, very tippy top. As long as it's in the block space a little bit, a hopper is able to pick it up. Now, if another container is in the block space above the hopper, the hopper is going to take from the inside of that container. So if I put some stone in here, you can see it immediately begins counting down, and that's the hopper taking it out of the chest and, of course, depositing it into this one. So the hopper is now moving items from this chest into this one. Hoppers can also be placed facing into the side of a block this way, and this is going to work the same way. If we put items in here, the block space above the hopper, it's going to subtract and take from this chest and move them into the container it's facing. Now at this point, you might raise your hand and ask, Professor Moonshine, what is a container? That's a great question. A container is any block that's capable of having items inside of it. You can think of it similar to the player's inventory. So, as you might expect, chests and barrels are on this list because they have inventories. You can put items inside of here. Droppers are also on this list, as are dispensers. And then we have some blocks like brewing stands, furnaces, and composters that do have inventories and hoppers can interact with. But for example, with the composter, a hopper can only put compostable blocks into here. So you can't throw, you know, rails into a hopper and the hopper put them into the composter. It'll only work with things that are able to be composted. Now hoppers are also containers, so a hopper can put an item into another hopper. Let's illustrate that a little bit better. So here we have a hopper. Normally it can take from this block space and put into this chest. But if we put another hopper on next to it, this hopper, if it were to take items, would put them into this hopper. So then this hopper has it and can pass it onto the chest. And you can chain this pretty long. All of these hoppers are going to pass an item onto the next one, and we can take a look at that if I throw a chest in there. It's going to make it all the way down here, one by one, through this hopper chain. Now, of course, this works vertically as well, so if I were to toss an item into here, the hopper would pass it onto the next hopper, and the next hopper, and so on, and we'll see that it ends up in the chest. So let's quickly review. So far we learned that hoppers take items from the space above them and pass them to containers that they're leading into. And those containers can be anything from chests to dispensers to other hoppers. Now here we have a hopper that's not leading anywhere, so it has nowhere to put its items. And we can see that this causes it to start filling up. Now a hopper only has five inventory slots, and once all of these are full, it's not going to be able to take in any more items. Similarly, if the container it's trying to put items into is also close to full, this will eventually backlog into the hopper itself. So we can watch, this is going to eventually reach 64. There we go. And now the hopper is starting to keep all the items it takes from this chest. And again, this can fill up the hopper and it won't be able to take any more items from up here. So hoppers can fill up if they're not leading anywhere or if the block they're leading into is already full itself. Now, if a hopper is receiving power, as this one is here, it becomes what's known as locked. 
A locked hopper cannot take items, nor can it give items. You can think of it kind of as being frozen. So you can see, if I put items into the chest above it, this hopper isn't taking them out. It's just leaving them in the chest. Similarly, if I put items directly into the hopper, it's not moving them down here. The hopper's in kind of a frozen state because it's receiving power. Hoppers can receive power from redstone torches, power blocks, also redstone dust, signals, basically anything. All you need to know is that if a hopper is receiving power from anywhere, it's locked, and it won't move items either from this chest or to this one. Now, locked hoppers can still have items put into them by other hoppers. So this hopper is locked because it's next to a strong powered block, so it's not able to take items in from the top, nor would it give items out on its own. But this hopper, this one's totally fine. It's not locked at all. So if we were to put items in here, it can push them into here. Similarly, a locked hopper can have its items taken by another unlocked hopper. So this hopper is again locked. It's receiving power from this powered block by this redstone signal. So this one is locked. If we put things into it, it can't move them anywhere. If we put things on top of it, it can't accept them, all that. But if we put another hopper below it, facing into this chest, this hopper isn't locked. This one's totally fine. So it's able to take items out of here and put them into the chest. I'll illustrate that by putting items into the locked hopper, and you can see they're immediately disappearing and moving into the chest. Again, this hopper is unable to move them, but this one can move them just fine because it's unlocked. To review, a hopper becomes locked when it receives power from any source, whether that's another redstone component, a power source, or anything like that. A locked hopper is unable to take and give. It can't gather items from above it, and it can't move those items into other containers. It's kind of in a frozen state. Even though it's in this frozen state, other hoppers that are unlocked can move items in and take items out. So you can kind of think of it like this. A locked hopper cannot take or give, but a locked hopper can be taken from and given to. Hopefully that makes some sense. The last thing I want to go over with hoppers is the order in which taking and giving happens. A hopper always gives what it has in its inventory first, and then takes and gives and alternates afterwards. So it starts with giving, and then it alternates between taking and giving. Let's look at an example of this. Here we have a locked hopper. This lever is powering it, and so it's locked. I just added some delay so that we can hopefully see things happening in real time. But this hopper is locked. Let's go ahead and put some red wool right here. And we'll go ahead and put gray wool right here. Now when I flick this lever and the hopper becomes unlocked and free to do its thing, first thing it's going to do is put red wool in, and then it's going to take from the chest above, and then give. So we should see in this chest red wool and then gray wool. Let's flick the lever and see if that happens. Awesome! Red wool, then gray wool. Exactly what we expected. Now let's try that same experiment but with a few changes. First I'm going to put the gray and red wool in here, and then I'm going to put the rest of the wool in the chest above. Now, because it gives first, and then takes, gives, takes, gives, on and on, what we should see is that it's going to give a gray wool, and then it's going to take an orange wool, but then the orange wool is going to be in this spot right here, and so then when it goes to give, it's going to give the orange, and so on through all these colors, and it should give the red one last. Let's see if that's actually what happens. Awesome, so exactly as predicted. It gave the gray wool first, then it took the orange, gave the orange, took the yellow, gave the yellow, all the way down, and finally it gave the red. So hopefully that experiment helped illustrate the order in which hoppers move items. So let's look at another example that illustrates the way that hoppers take and give. Here we have four chests on top of each other, and hoppers leading into those chests that are also below the ones above them. If I were to throw a red wool into here, where might you expect it to go? You might expect it to go into this chest because this hopper leads into this chest, but it's actually not there as I just showed. It's down here. That seems a little weird, so I'll explain what's going on. Essentially what's going on is I'm throwing the red wool into this hopper, and this hopper is taking that red wool into its inventory. Now before it can give it to this chest, the hopper below sees the red wool in this inventory and also takes it, because remember, hoppers take from the containers above. So now the red wool is in this inventory, and the hopper below that one takes it, and then so on, until it eventually gets down to the bottom hopper, and there's no hopper to take it from this hopper, so this hopper just deposits it. Hopefully that makes sense. I'll run it one more time so you can see what's going on. So the, hop the red wool goes into this hopper, then this one takes it, and then this one, and so on, and the hopper, the red wool ends up at the bottom. Alright, that concludes the new material for hoppers, and now we can go ahead and review what we talked about. Number one, what is a hopper? A hopper can be thought of like a pipe. It moves items from the block space above it into a container that it's facing into, 
And a reminder, containers are any blocks that kind of can hold items or have an inventory. Now a hopper can't move items into full containers, and if the hopper itself fills up, it won't be able to take in any more items. Second, we learn that hoppers can be locked by receiving a power signal, and a locked hopper cannot transport items to or from blocks. And third, we went over the order in which hoppers take and give. Basically, hoppers give an item first, and then they alternate between taking and giving. And we looked at a few examples of that playing out in different redstone contraptions. Alright guys, that's all I have to teach you about hoppers. And we are going to take a quiz in just a moment, but before we get to that, I want to ask you guys a question. So next episode, episode 6, is going to be all about comparators, and then I'm considering making the video after that a kind of like midterm quiz or exam video where it the whole video is just kind of like an extended version of the quiz segment that we typically do and I'll ask you guys questions that combine elements from all the concepts we've learned so far so let me know if that's a video you'd be interested in seeing uh, in the comments just let me know yes or no if not I won't do it and if you guys are interested I think it'd be really fun and I think it would be helpful to see some circuits that combine some of the concepts we've learned about so far now with that out of the way let's get started on our hoppers quiz here is problem number one. I'm going to go ahead and throw a red wool into the top hopper and then give you guys a moment to think about what chest the red wool ended up in. The red chest, the blue chest, the green chest, or the yellow chest. Feel free to pause and think if you need to. Alright, the correct answer is that the red wool is in the bottom chest. So congratulations if you got that right, and if not, we'll go over it right now. So the reason why the red wool ended up in the bottom chest is again because when I throw it, it goes into this hopper's inventory. But because hoppers take from the inventory above them, the hopper below is able to take the red wool out before this one dispenses it. And that goes on until it reaches the bottom and finally the last hopper is able to dispense it into the yellow chest. Let's move on to problem number two. Here's problem number two, not a huge change, and again I'm going to throw a red wool in and I want you guys to take a moment to guess what chest that red wool is going to end up in. I'll give you guys another moment. All right, if you guessed the blue chest, you're correct. Now, why did that happen? The only thing I changed from the last problem is that this one has this redstone torch over here, which is powering this hopper. And remember, a powered hopper can't take or give any items. So when the red wool is traveling down, it reaches this hopper, and this one, because it's locked, isn't able to take it out of here. So this one just puts it into the blue chest. Lastly, let's move on to problem number three. Here is problem number three. I'll give you guys a moment to look at it. It is different. But yeah, I'll go ahead and throw red wool in, and I want you guys to see if you know where the red wool is going to end up. Got your answer? All right. The correct answer is again in the yellow chest or bottom chest. If you got all three of those right, congratulations, you have a very good grasp of how hoppers work. And if you didn't, I totally understand, it's a little confusing, no worries, we'll go over it right now. So, like problem number two, this one also has the locked hopper right here, that's locked because of this redstone torch. However, I changed this hopper. This hopper is no longer aiming into the chest, it's aiming into the locked hopper. And remember that an unlocked hopper can still deposit items into a locked one just fine. So when I throw the red wool in, it is taken by this hopper and given to this one even though this one's locked. And then lastly, this one is still able to take it out and the red wool ends up in the yellow chest. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for today's class. Hopefully you guys learned a lot about hoppers, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments as always. And I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to leave a like and subscribe, but no worries if not. And as always, shine on little stars.